we've made some improvements in our system that allow us to perform better at this time. We've done some, some things that protected our system and allowed uh, parts of our system to stay up. Now, not exclusively the water system, but other parts of our system also. And so we were better prepared and we had learned from the Cedar Fire. I can tell you that the Witch Creek Fire, what we call Witch Fire now, was significantly different than the Cedar Fire for us. The Witch Fire chose an entirely different path through the, through the district. It chose different facilities to attack. It exposed different weaknesses. But the biggest significance for, for myself was the duration of this event versus the duration of the Cedar event. They were called Cedar. It was kind of a big fire out of town, start raining. It was uh, not a long thing to deal with, not, not to diminish the, the significance of the impact of the event, but the, the, the duration for us was different. I'd like to say, I don't see her, but uh, Supervisor Jacob has uh, a process going on to consolidate, potentially consolidate the rural water districts in the unincorporated part of the county. And then and that process categorizes the districts. And Ramona is in one of the two, there's actually two reports being uh, were, were authored, and, and Ramona falls into the category of needs help, I mean, to be honest. The rural fire districts in this county need financial help. They're not well funded, some are not funded at all. Of the ones that need help, we're, we're, we're kind of on the top of the of water group, if that's any um, help to, to make us feel better. But still, the firefighting needs money in this county. We can't get things approved by voters, but we still are expected to, to deal with the, with the fire issues. Um, and, and of those, we're a well-funded poor agency, if I could say it that way. So I just want you to be aware of the sort of, of arrangement that we that we start out from here. We're not at the high end of something with a lot of resources to start with. Clearly the biggest deficiency, the biggest, uh, the biggest infrastructure deficiency that was exposed by this fire was the fact that we have a, an aging pump station, we rely on it. It's the only way we get water up the hill from Poway, it's a long hill. That pump station is located a long way from the main road, got a narrow path. It's highly overgrown. It has one source of supply, water, power supply to it. I'm clear that's the biggest source of, of our problem in this fire. I believe there's at least one politician in the room. And uh, if anything, we'd like to appeal that somebody consider that that might be an issue that could be addressed even outside of this small water district. I would say the biggest operational issue that we experienced with this fire, again, separating from the Cedar Fire, and I, I characterize it as saying the, the operational issue is, is a question to us. And, and that's, when is a mandatory evac evacuation not a mandatory evacuation? Because I'm confronted with a mandatory evacuation in my district. But I'm really serving two populations. There are people that did not evacuate. In fact, there are a significant number of people that did not evacuate. And they need water. They need water forget in the beginning for, for hygiene or anything like that. They need water to fight fires. Those who stayed, I realize they're not supposed to be here. Those who stayed, I'm sure many of them were, were fighting their own fires. Many of them were fighting their neighbor's fires. Many of them were going up and down the street. And if they picked up a garden hose someplace to put out an ember, they expected me to provide them water. So in a theoretical textbook sense, I suppose, as the, as the water district manager, my first reaction should have been to shut off every meter as soon as I thought there was going to be a really big fire. Not a good idea, I'm thinking, at the time. Okay, so, so I'm confronted with a population that's here. 
that, that is using fire in, in my estimation, my characterization in a productive way. And yet in order to get to them, I'm probably going to lose some of them. So, so I'm deciding what it is that, you know, what priority I have to do. And it's uh, my decision to keep those, those, those people in water as long as I can. I also have to serve the uh, Ramona fire base. That's one of my customers that I chose not to shut up. So I have a, it's a, it's a mandatory evacuation, but I will tell you I had a population to serve in town. And I had a limited amount of resources of water to serve them. And so the choice is what do you do with them? And so we chose to serve them. Many of those people, by the way, that stayed were not only helpful in fighting fires, but many of them would turn a neighbor's sprinkler system off or turn a valve off or turn a meter off at a burned out house. So I'm not suggesting at all that they, sh that they were not helpful. They were helpful. I understand they should have not been here. But having said that, uh, they were here, and I was trying to give them the water that I could until it, I don't know, I guess until it ran out pretty much. It kind of pretty much did run out though. So I have a population that's inside the district that I'm serving, even though they're not supposed to be here, and I have a population outside the, uh, the district this we expect something else of me. The population outside of my district that is left as voluntarily or excuse me, as mandatorily left in the evacuation, I owe them something too. And what I owe them is a return to a stable system. Um, obviously, we're not going to return to a business as usual system for a long time, but if I at least owe them a stable system when they do come back. And I believe that in Cedar Fire, for instance, I think we, we left, we came back, we left again. That's not a good thing to me. So if, 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 a, if, a, if a evacuee comes back, they should at least have the expectation for me to have something stable to come back to. I think they should also have an expectation of some sort of a solution on the near horizon. So I'm serving two populations now. And this point in time. And a lot of people in town I have some water. We're working with them. I have people that are not in town. We'll be coming back to town and I need to work to serve them. So <clears throat> to serve them both, as you saw in the chart and the pictures in the time time frame, the first thing we did, the immediate thing we did, was to get a way to replenish the system. That's my biggest problem at this point in time. I don't have a way to replenish the system. And basically a lot of water goes through that system on a, on a, on a daily basis. We don't have a tremendous amount of storage in, um, up the hill after it gets here. But we can, we can pull a lot of water up and in a hot summer day, we often need it. So 